Good evening. It's 7.05, Monday, April 6, 2020, and we're starting the select board meeting. Call to order. Any additions or changes to the agenda? I would like to add a short discussion on the road radar. Okay, so noted. Any public comment? Hearing none, we'll move to the treasurer's report. Hi, can everybody hear me? Doing good. Yes, hi, Diane. Okay, good. Okay, so I wanted to go through a few things. Um, I've had a question today. Somebody called and asked if we were going to um, delay when taxes were due for May 15th. I told that person, no, not at this point in time. And then what I did is I went online to see what other towns were doing. And um, Berry City, Berry Town, Middlesex, and East Montpelier did not have any kind of delays. The only type of delay that I saw was uh, Montpelier, and they're not delaying when the taxes are due. What they're doing is delaying when the penalty and interest begin. So instead of the penalty and interest be beginning on um, May 16th, it would begin on June 15th. So I just thought I would make you aware of this and that maybe that we should put this on a future agenda so that we might want to talk about it. And we did find out today that we are not able to change the date of the due date, the due date, because the voters voted on it. Right. And do and do we know if we can actually change the penalty and interest date because we also voted on that? And and I'm waiting for an answer on that. However, I do see Montpelier did it, and it's probably more relaxed than you know. That that could be. Okay, the other things that I wanted to talk about had to do with payments and any other ways to make payments. Because right now, obviously the town offices are closed. Uh, if people are paying me cash, what I do is I have them come outside my door and then I get my gloves on and then I go out and I get the payment and I go back in the office and then I make the receipt out. So I was thinking what other ways are people gonna ask me how they make payments if they don't wanna come to the town offices? So one of them, um, I thought, well, maybe if they could scan a check and then I could take that check and then scan it through the printer uh, that I have that I scan directly to the bank. Uh, the bank frowned on that said, we can't do that. So there is one, one way we can't pay, make payments. Uh, the other one that I was thinking about was Venmo. And Venmo is that payment uh, that a lot of people use where, uh, for instance, if I owed money to Dana, I could just put money directly into his checking account. So when I asked the bank about that, they said Venmo is not secure enough. So that would not be a way. So the other thing I was thinking about is the credit card fees, because the way ours is set up, uh, we pay, excuse me, the residents pay the fees. So the town does not have to absorb those fees. So I went to the credit card company, I asked them, is there any way during this COVID-19 time that you could relax these fees so it'd be easier for our residents to pay? And they said, no. The only alternative that we could have is if uh, we as a town paid the fees, which doesn't you know, seem feasible to me because that could be quite expensive. Our fee schedule is um, for the property taxes is 2.5% for credit cards, 1.5% for debit cards, electronic checks are $1.95, uh, and then the minimum is $3.95 if you're using credit card or debit card. So those were the fees that, that I'm talking about. And like I said, I'm just trying to find alternatives for people and trying to figure out if people ask me these questions, what I can give them for answers. So I'm just giving you the information. I don't expect us to have uh, to make uh, any decisions about that at this point in time, just if you could be thinking about it. Uh, the last thing that I have has, it has to do with the swim lessons. Every year, the town pays for swim lessons. What we do is we pay $25 for every child that is enrolled in this, pro in this program and the parents pay the difference. We pay $25 a child up to $1,000 for total. 
And that I would like to know if the select board is willing to do that again this year. And this is if obviously there are going to be swimming lessons, which at this point we don't know for sure, but the school is reaching out to me and wants to know if we will provide this, this service. So you're waiting for a motion from the board yes. to approve the swim lessons? Yes. And, but we're not sure if they're gonna have them, but in the event they do, Correct. Where, where are the swim lessons? In Montpelier. The, the rec center the Montpelier, I believe. Municipal pool, I think. Yeah. I'll entertain a motion. I think John had a more question possibly. I, I, I guess I, I've just never heard of a town paying for it, individual child uh, swim lessons before. So I'm kind of curious how we how we came about this. Do we pay for uh, hockey registration as well? No, no, the swim lessons came about many years ago, long before my time. So I know we've been doing it for at least 10 years and we have been doing it every year. So how it started, I really don't know. Okay. And I don't believe it's the full um, amount that it, that it costs. No, normally it costs between six hundred and fifty and seven hundred and fifty dollars a year. I meant per child. Right, per child. Yeah. Um, yeah. Per child, I think it might be fifty dollars or something. We pay twenty five, and the parent pays a difference. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. It's been a long term practice, John, that they've done. Um, the recreation committee has done, and we've continued it the last few years. Yeah, I, I don't have any other questions. Okay. Are there any other questions anyone has? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to discontinue the $25 uh, per per child for this, this coming summer with the uncertainty in the amount. Do I hear a second? I'm having trouble hearing a person who was just speaking. I don't think they were speaking to us. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think we have some filtering background noise that's coming in on the conference call. Okay. Do folks want to discuss this further before a second, or are they in agreement to second John's motion put before us? I think we should wait. When do you need a decision, Diane? Uh, well, she's been pushing me for a decision like for the last month, so I'm not exactly certain, but I can certainly contact her tomorrow. Okay, I think that would be good. And then that way, if she will give us more time, we could put it on for the next agenda. Okay, that sounds good. Wonderful, thank, thank you. you. Okay, thanks. And I'm done with my report. Thank you very much, Diane. Yeah, thanks. While you're here, Diane, I wanted to ask the board if they have reviewed the warrants, if there were any questions on the accounts payable run. Right.
Did anyone have any questions on the warrants if you've had a chance to review them? No. No questions here. Diane, how have we decided to get the warrant signed? Uh, what I'm going to do until we hear something different from the attorney is once the minutes have been approved, I am going to attach the minutes to the warrant. <clears throat> Could we possibly buy a DocuSign license so we can sign electronically? I am working with that right now, actually. Okay. We, we do it for state contracts. The attorney general is fine with it. Um, okay. Electronic signatures are a pretty common thing these days. So right. I think okay. it's something we could do once you figure it out. Yep. Excellent. Any other discussion on the warrants before we move forward? Okay, now I'll open it up for the approval of the licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Any discussion? Hearing none, do I have an, um, a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by John. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Can you hear me now? A second the motion. Thank you. So we have a motion to approve by John and a second by Justin. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you so much for joining us. And again, I want to direct the group to the feedback forms. Josh has just put that. I, I, I'm hearing some background noise. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time hearing here. I am too, and I don't know what to do about it. Yeah, it's the 1720 number, the last four digits, 1720. If they could mute themselves, that would probably be helpful. Oh, okay. That, that's the box that was lighting up, which means that's the box that the noise was coming from. Hopefully they heard you in no your noise meeting. here, but I, I think it's the other meeting that's filtering in. So, but I, I'll go ahead and mute. That's fine. So, Flo, could you say one more time? Did did you ask uh, for a yay and nay vote on the warrant? Yes, I did. So, I have a motion to approve by yourself, John, and a second by Justin. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Flo, um, I'm just like to read the what you're approving so that everyone understands what it is. Uh, Wonderful. That would be great. Thank you, Dana. You're approving general funds account payable warrant 20G18 with checks 2105 to 2139 in the amount of $65,786.67. And, 67 cents. and you're approving the payroll warrant 2020 for the payroll from March 15th, 2020 to March 28th, 2020, paid on April 1st, 2020, in the amount of 46,877.83. Excellent. Thank you, Dana. And do we still have the motion by you, John, to approve and second by you, Justin? Yes. yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, motion carries. Now moving to the next item on the agenda is the Public Works Board, and it's the discussion on allocation. And I don't have anyone from Public Works on flow. Um, okay. Well, I so have but, a couple of questions. But why don't you discuss it, Justin? You had asked yeah, about Yeah, I appreciate that. So Excellent. Thank you, Justin. Thanks. Recently, the public so recently the Public Works Board has made a few decisions, um, and they're they're pretty big ones. And I wasn't present for the the new policy that we adopted, but I feel like 
some of the decisions that were made, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with. So I wanted to talk as a select board about them, um, and maybe get a better understanding of how we should operate. Um, so when I look back through the minutes, um, I, 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 could Dana, do you understand how the uh, what are how our expenses are? Um, how we currently pay for our fixed sewer expenses and where those expenses come from? Well, the sewer division is self-funded by sewer users and those funds come from user fees. And I think what you're talking about is the change in the allocation, um, how the allocation is handled. Many people have large um, various allocations that they have been saving for future development. I think that's what you're, where you're going. No, well, so yeah, that's part of it, but that's not all of it. Uh -huh. um, so part of it is um, we, we have a, a, Tom had told me a $350,000 a year fixed cost for operating the sewer. How are we currently paying for that? Out of user fees. Just straight out of user fees. Yes. Yeah. And how much does the sewer department bring in? currently out of user fees is it is it losing money is it i mean how is do you know how that financially stands usually the budget is um made up in the sewer um to collect the amount of money the rate is set to collect the amount of money that they need for their expenses and it's it's not an exact science of course because it depends on your sales um and I would have to look at their budget to tell you how much per year. But if I were to guess, and Diane help me with this, um, would you guesstimate it to be 500,000 a year, something like that? No, I think it's probably more than that. I don't have the exact numbers and I can certainly get those. Uh, and we do tend to break even. The only times we don't break even is uh, when we have a lot of expenses. For instance, when the Shaw's pump kept breaking and breaking and replacing an awful lot of items. That year, we did not, we did not, you know, we lost money, but it wasn't a whole lot. Uh, the allocation money is in a separate fund and that's in a separate, uh, I have those in CDs. And then the, um, the funds that pay, uh, that pay the fees out of, you know, that we pay fees from, that's in its own separate checking account as well. So the allocation fees do not mix with that. So allocation fees are never used for just the general expenses. A big part of our general expenses is that um, everything is processed through Montpelier. So we have collection and, um, and that is like a monthly fee. And I can't remember exactly what that, that is, but it's like maybe $35,000 a month just for that. Plus we have a bond for the River Street bond, which is like $7,000 a month. And those are fixed costs that we cannot get away from. Uh, and then the rest of it tends to be um, repairs. Uh, we have a person that's on contract with us that has to maintain the system at all times. So that's another fairly large fee. That's like $65,000 a year. But I could certainly get the things together uh, and go through that with you at the next, at the next meeting. I, I was thinking, Justin, we were going to have members of the Public Works Board here. Um, so obviously, I'm a little surprised that we didn't, but it could be we're doing business that's very weird right at the moment. So let me speak with the Public Works Board, and I will try to get them to your next meeting. And in the meantime, I'm sure Diane and I can pull together some figures for you on, on the finances and get you better answers. Right. So overall, I, I, the finances, I just, I would like to know those numbers. My concern is that um, as maybe the rest of the board isn't really aware of how it works either, um, that we have 600,000 gallons that we have that we can allocate. We've currently allocated the 400,000 gallons. Out of that, we're only using around 250,000 gallons. So there's 150,000 gallons of what's called um, unallocated, there's unallocated usage or whatever. Yeah. Now, the last public works board meeting, I, I mean, I have 8,000 gallons of allocation a day on my Barry Montpelier Road, uh, 672-302, the old Sundera, and it's connected. 
I'm not using it. Um, but the Public Works Board, and I'm not sure what the motive behind this was, and I would, I, I'd be curious to have it on the record um, and in a meeting. The Public Works Board passed, uh, passed at their last meeting where if you have an allocation, regardless of whether you paid for it, whether it was granted back in the day when the, whatever, the, the town didn't charge for it, um, if it's to a site that is currently unconnected, uh, regardless of usage, they want to charge $1.65 a gallon for unconnected allocation. Um, so I'm not sure what the rational thought process is behind that, but I mean, to me that that seems if it's associated with covering the fixed costs of the sewer, you would think that the fixed costs of the sewer would be covered proportionally for allocation, period, regardless of whether it's unallocated or allocated, if that was truly their intent. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, I feel like it might be targeting a little bit um, because I'm, I theoretically, I'm not doing anything with my 8,000 gallons, but just because it's hooked up, I'm not gonna get charged. It doesn't seem like a, a solid policy to me. I think one of that I know one of the things that they are trying to do is to change the structure of the rate and because I would support a minimum charge to cover the fixed cost because right now we're dependent if if you're building, for example, and you're not using it, um, but it's available to you. Um, we're not getting any revenue from that building or the sewer divisions not getting any revenue. So I can't speak for the, their, that board, but why don't we try to get them in the next meeting? I'm sorry they're not on tonight. Yeah, Dana, I, I, I'm curious if there are any other, sta uh, not states, but towns doing business like this. How, how are other towns uh, building their rate structure uh, that are in similar situations? You know, I, I don't wanna be um, in a model that isn't consistent with what others are doing. I would rather be following the same model. So um, whether I'm doing business in Berlin or Barrie or Williamstown, it's all the same, right? So if if we could find out what others are doing, that'd be really helpful. Um, we have that information, John, and I think that what they're moving toward is to model what other communities are doing um, as far as the minimum, but we can get those answers for you. Yeah, I think it would be Are there any other extremely people helpful have for or? him to be at the next meeting, even if it's virtually. I mean, I think Chip joined specifically because it was on the agenda as well. Um, That's right, and, and I, he, I realized, yeah. And he hadn't been invited. Uh, there were a bunch of items at the last one. He came to me concerned. Uh, there were a bunch of items on the last public works board meeting. Uh -huh. that really impacted them um and so i don't know if it's our would we typically reach out to to somebody i mean there were three items that were specific to their properties i can't speak on how the public works board notices their meeting because to be honest with you i i thought he had a list that he sent to people um i can ask him to see um i would have thought he would have reached out um Posting, but again, and I have the same thing happen to me. Sometimes you don't always get everyone you should. Um, but I hear you. Okay, thank you. I guess we'll have to cover it at a later date when he. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, John. Is there any other discussion that folks want on this topic? Okay, hearing none, we'll move to the next item on the agenda, which is the appointment of board and committee liaison. This is the, um, I had spoken to you before about an idea of having a select board member as a liaison to our committee. And this is not something that we've done before. And it's, it's a suggestion that I'm just making. Um, the, Committees that we currently have are the Cemetery Commission, the Conservation Commission, the DRB, Economic Development, Planning Commission, 
Public Works Board, Recreation Committee, and finally um, a liaison to the Berlin Fire Department. Um, I know that there has been interest in having the liaison to the Berlin Fire Department appointed, um, and I'm not sure how you're feeling on the other boards. It would be, I think it's a good way to get information flowing to have members familiar with the various boards because it is difficult to keep up by reading minutes only. I entertain discussion on the topic. Are there people that are interested in particular liaison positions to the various boards? And if so, which ones? I, I have an interest in the Economic Development Board. Thank you, John. I'm making a note of that. So John has the interest in the Economic Development Board. Is there someone on the board that would like to be on the Cemetery Commission? Hearing none, I'll move to the Conservation Commission. Is there anyone that would like to be on that? Hearing none, is there any interest in the Development Review Board? I would I would be interested in the Development Review Board as well as the uh, probably the, uh, the the highway. Um, public Works. Yeah, Public Works would be good too. Yeah, because I don't I don't have highway. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought we had talked about at one point um, having uh, the uh, town, uh, you know, liaison to the police department, highway department, all that as well. You know, we had, uh, Justin, and I think it would be a good idea when our new um, superintendent starts to get off on the right foot with that. Okay. So Might I made not be a, a bad idea. It may not be a bad idea to have somebody there for the transition as well. Absolutely, yeah. Would you like to be the person for highway? That's what I, yeah, that's why I was Did you, is, I'm sorry, I'm just, okay. Justin, are you also interested in the Public Works Board or highway and DRB? Uh, I would, I would, I could do the DRB or the Public Works. I don't think I could actually handle those more than that. Uh, so I, I'd be willing to do either one of those, whichever one, um, whichever one somebody else didn't want to do would be perfectly acceptable to me. Okay, that's wonderful. Thank you. And the planning commission, is there someone that would like to be on that as a liaison? Okay, so the only other one that I have listed, unless I'm missing one, is the Berlin Fire Department. Uh, that's Recreation Committee um, flow, and um, and we'll add the police onto that as well. That's excellent. Very good. So, with the Recreation Committee, is there an interest in another person being on that as well? That's a brand new committee that's just been reorganized. So we're, uh, and the meeting I was going to have with them got canceled because of this pandemic. So we're working on that. What I would suggest, Dana, if we don't have someone for each of them tonight, that we could put them on the next agenda because that would give people time to think about it. And there might be interest, you know, once folks have had the chance to consider it a little more. Okay. So we'll hold off on the Recreation Committee for now. Is there an interest, someone who would like to be involved with the police? So I, I actually have a question about this one. Um, and it has to do around the contract. How, do, how does the Berlin Select Board or administrator uh, negotiate the contract? Is there a committee for that? Or is that left up to the discretion of the administrator? How's that done? No, it was done with a committee. 
the the entire board or is there a separate committee it wasn't it was one board member was on the committee as well as um myself two people from the police department and our attorney sat on it and then it was brought to the board for full board for its approval the the contract goes to the end of 21 and it will be starting to negotiate probably at the end of this year okay June of 21 i'm sorry yeah Is there anyone who has interest in it now, or would you prefer to wait until the next board meeting? Hearing no discussion, I'll move on to the Berlin Fire Department. I've expressed an interest. Is there additional interest? I had as well. Do we want to table it for tonight and bring it to the next board meeting when we make decisions on the others? Fine by me. Are others in agreement with doing it that way? Yes. Very well, so we'll move along on the agenda. So the next item up on the agenda is the discussion of possible extension of gravel purchase contract and bid. But because we're a little ahead of schedule, Dana, if you wanted to go ahead and do the discussion on the road grader, if it's a good time for you now. Flo, well, may I, um, there was two, another item for appointments, the committee appointments for reappointments. Oh, okay, very good. Let's go ahead and do that then, Dana. So those are uh, citizens who have an interest in being appointed or reappointment appointed to committees. And I've reached out to everyone whose term is expiring to um, talk with them about their interest. Um, we have one new appointment that I'm suggesting to you, and it is for the Conservation Commission. We have received interest from Wendelin Bowles of 68 Plateau Drive is interested. Uh, the chairman uh, knows Wendelin and, and supports her to be appointed. She um, is someone who has attended the last few Conservation Commission meetings and she is in the Vermont Master Naturalist Program uh, training in that, and she's worked on various trail crews and the Master Gar Gardener program, and she's conducted surveys for the ash borer situation and the woolly hemlock agelet. There he is. <laughs> Hello, Brad just came on. Wonderful. Good evening, Brad. Evening. Do you want to take over the meeting now? Oh, good Lord, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I just I just figured out how to get on. I thought I had it all. I was all set, but we're working now. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome. Do I entertain a motion now for appointing Wendell and Bowles to the Conservation Committee? So move. Um, second. That John? Yeah, okay. And so I'll second that motion. We have moved by motion. John and seconded by Justin. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Okay, Dana, if you want to go ahead and have the road grader discussion, unless there was anyone else that submitted Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, Flo. Now I've got the reappointments for your consideration. And these are people that have served on these committees whose terms are expiring and have expressed interest to be reappointed. 
uh, liaison to the Central Vermont Fiber Committee. Jeremy Hansen was the town's representative and he would like to continue in that role. Dana, can we do it just a blanket on this? If you would like to, sure, I'll read them and then, yeah, that's a good idea. Liaison I to think the, that's a great idea. Okay, so the first is the one I just mentioned, the Liaison to Central Vermont Fiber Committee, Jeremy Hansen. The Economic Development Council, that would be Jeremy Hansen, Roberta Haskin, Tor Nelson, Jamie Stewart. The Citizen Liaison to the Fire Department, Jerry Diamatides. The town representative for Central Vermont Regional Planting, Robert Wernick. The alternate town representative for Central Vermont Regional Planning, Carla Nuisel. And finally, the town representative on the Central Vermont Regional Planning Transportation Board, Robert Warnick. I'll entertain a motion as presented by Dana. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? So moved. Who was the motion, please? I if was. I heard correctly, it was John. Okay. okay. Doesn't matter. Yeah. And the second? Aye, Dad. Justin? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you both. Okay, if there's everyone's in agreement, we'll move to the discussion on the road grader. Tim has spoken about the road grader to me. Um, I have asked him to have someone from um, Caterpillar come and look at the machine or have us, we will truck it down there. Someone has come and looked at the machine. I'm waiting for the report and the figure that Tim gives me is about $50,000, although I would rather wait until I have the um, report in hand. Um, and he is also saying that including that $50,000, he needs new tires, which would be $8,000 of that 50,000. He of course is encouraging the purchase of a new road grader. Um, and I just wanted to bring the board up to up to date on what has happened with the road grader. I think we should wait till we get here from the uh, Caterpillar people. Okay. I agree. Yeah. What What's wrong with the current grader? There are several items that need to be repaired. Um, I can't tell you what it'd be, but when I have the report, I will. Is it, it just, functional it, right now? Yes. Okay. It, it just seems to me that 50,000 is a lot better than 500,000. Agreed. Yeah. I don't know what the hours are on that machine, but I mean, that machine should hold up for at least eight to 9,000 hours, maybe even 10 if it's well maintained. He told me it has 6,300 hours. Yeah. I, I think we can get a, I think we can get another year out of it. Mm hmm. Well, we had asked him, I've been after him to get some figures on what it would cost and have someone look at it as far as what needs to be done. And that's far more. That's all I wanted to talk to you about on that. Any other discussion from anyone regarding the road grader before we move forward? Hearing none, we'll move forward to the discussion of possible extension of the town lawn maintenance contract 2020. Flo, did you miss the gravel purchase contract and bid? The extension? Or did I miss it? No, that's what we were just, I thought that's what we, well, maybe we did. Let me look. Yeah, we did. Yeah. That's all right, Flo. We'll we'll find. We'll catch it. Shall we talk yes, about we can gravel? Discuss that yeah. now. Okay. 
Uh, the gravel bed, um, the last time we put the gravel bid out was in 2017, and we received one bid from Northeast Materials for 895. In the bid, we had the opportunity to extend it for a few subsequent years, and Northeast has held the same price of 895 a ton for material. Um, it's that time of year. Northeast has offered to hold the price for another year. Um, I, I guess I would encourage the board to take them up on that rather than send it to be rebid. We just don't have people interested in bidding in it, on it. And I'm of the mind that if we were to rebid it, it would be more expensive. What? What would it hurt to put it out for a rebid just to see worst case scenario, wouldn't we be able to go with this contract just to see if there was anybody interested? Uh, no, not if you put it out to a rebid. You'd have to take what was bid. Can, can we table this until the next meeting and maybe just kind of do a little bit more research, see, see if we think anybody, I mean, I have, had time to look at or think about it but somebody might be there might be more interest especially right now i would think yeah i mean i'm interested it's all public record what are other towns doing what are their prices i think we can use some of that to guide us okay um do you want me to research that is that what you're telling me sure if you're volunteering <laughs> of course i can All good points. Thank you, Dana, and thanks for the suggestion. So we'll go ahead and table that for the next meeting. And thanks for your research in advance, Dana. <laughs> okay, well, you thank me when I do it, huh? <laughs> so we're ahead of schedule. We're now at the point of approval of the review of the select board minutes for 312-2020 and 316-2020. May I entertain so a motion? Can we go back to the lawn bit? Yes, absolutely. Right. That was bid out last year and with the opportunity, with the caveat that we could renegotiate another year for the same price and the vendor we used last year, Orange County, uh, property management agreed to continue for the same price. We did have three bids last year. Shall I put... So do you want to talk about that? What other towns are doing on that? I think most other towns have their own uh, buildings and grounds people. Dana, what was the total cost of the, of the, or what was the bid last time around? For the uh, $2,000 for the season. So we're really not at the threshold for rebidding. No, not really. We've always done it that way. It's really it's under five thousand, which is our policy. I would I would think that that's a small like two thousand dollars is a small expense to make some just to continue forward if they're still willing to honor that. Is that kind of what you're getting at, Brad? Or what? Yeah, because I mean it's um, well, it doesn't really. It's not really if, if cost efficient to keep, uh, you know, running after two thousand dollars because what's it going to be a hundred dollars one way or the other? Because most of those people are pretty competitive in their pricing. I agree. So I would, I would, I would move to take and accept the uh, extension of the contract we already have. I'll second that. Do I? Okay, very good. So we have Brad's motion and John's second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so move. So now turning our attention to the select board minutes, do I hear any discussion? Do we have a motion to approve? Move to approve. Thank you, Brad. Do I hear a second? 
I'll second. Thank you, Angelina. Motion by Brad, second by Angelina. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. All right, we're at the point of the town administrator's report, Dana. I wanted to just talk briefly um, about the procedures that we are using during this time. Um, there is a, and Justin had asked in an email about it, and I thought it was a good idea, so I will forward it to you. The police chief has an operation um, for his department, which I will forward to you. And as you know, we are open. However, no one can come into the building. So we, we wait on people more or less through email or telephone calls. Um, and it's not very busy doing that, I might add, but we and had to try to pay taxes, Diane accommodates them. And she has a procedure which um, to handle if they're paying with cash and several people do pay with cash. So um, for your next meeting, I'll have that typed up. Um, I also wanted to advise you that the academy, the police academy has this because of this situation. Uh, two people there and they have done a workaround so that they can, these two candidates can work under their, they've already gone enough work to have the part-time certification. So they will be working for us with that. And we are waiting to see what happens with full-time academy. That's all I have, Flo. Thank you, Dana. Is there any discussion regarding the town administrator report? Hearing none, we'll move to round table. Brad, do you have anything for round table tonight? Um, on the liaisons, uh, Dana, I noticed you didn't have uh, the police department down there. We had, I didn't, and I, you heard, but Justin mentioned that as well, so I had put that on. Okay. And it will be on your, on your, um, your April 20th agenda. Okay. Okay. Justin, did you have anything for round table? Um, yeah, my question was, I, I just, I thought we were gonna have some other agenda items on. Um, so I just wanted to get some input on why those got taken off. Uh, one was the class four to three discussion that's been ongoing. You want to handle that, Dana, or you want me to? <laughs> I'll let you do it, Brad. Justin, the, the agreement we reached with the doubts and the walkers was one year. And I was thinking that in the meantime, this summer, we're going to get done a, a policy for that as far as changing road classifications. And then they will be the test road. So you were breaking up a little bit. So you were saying, I get that they were a year, um, but that, so you want to wait for that year or something for this policy? What I want to do, what, what I want to do is wait till we are, till their, their one year is up. And in the meantime, before we come to uh, dealing with it, I would like to have a, a uniform policy on the books that we can use to take and uh, see what roads will be classified from class four to class three or from class three to class four. Yeah, it's standard. And I, I, I thought that's, I thought we, that we were having a discussion on that tonight. That's, that's why it wasn't specific to the black road. It was about a policy that we were looking at putting in place. And I saw that it wasn't on there. So I was curious. Well, the way I read it was a it was a discussion on Black Road itself, so I took it off the, the agenda. All right, I thought uh, my impression was that we were moving forward with this policy so that we could uniform 
everything, we could have a good road inventory and that we would have a policy in place, a standard policy, non-specific to that road. That was my thought and that's how I read the email. About it. And that's what I think we need to do. And so I was kind of like, why is it off the agenda? Yeah, I was just, my interpretation was different than yours. Sorry. It'll be on the next one. All right, thank you. I was just curious. Yeah. Thank you for opening that up to uh, discussion and we'll put that on for the next agenda. And was there another item, Justin, that you also had expected on the agenda? Did I understand it that way? Uh, no, I may have misstated that. I was, I guess more or less, it was that. And then the, uh, I guess I was just worried. I would like Tom to know that we missed him. <laughs> I thought he was gonna be here at this meeting. Okay. And were there other anything else you wanted to discuss before I move on? No, that's it, Flo. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. John, did you have anything for roundtable? Yep. Um, I had a couple of things that I just think we should all be thinking about is whether or not we should be considering a spending freeze. Um, the local businesses in town um, don't have any traffic. They're gonna have a hard time paying their bills. They're gonna have a hard time paying their taxes. Uh, I think that we need to think about uh, ways to reduce our budget. Um, I realized that it, our budget was approved in March. Things have changed a lot since March. And I think we ought to look uh, and focus on building a strategy to reduce our uh, 21 budget by 10%. Um, it's not gonna be super popular but uh i think in these times people are having a really hard time paying their taxes and um, on top of everything that's going on right now it's only going to get harder over the next year and I, I i think it's going to be tough but i think we need to start to buckle down and figure out how exactly we're going to do it that's it very valid point john Do we want to put that on the next agenda or the agenda just after that, depending on how much we have on the next one, so that we can think about it in between and then have a more elaborate discussion? Well, if, uh, if, if you're serious about that, then there's no reason we can't start doing a 10% cut across the board uh, in July. Yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. As soon as FY21 rolls around, I think we need to do some thoughtful planning all the way around. And I think we have a couple months to do that, but I think we need to put something in place to make sure that the following year, as you know, prices continue to go up, that we have a surplus there to ensure that there's absolutely no increase to the tax tax base that following year. I concur we, with that. Other discussion? The, um, I mean, we do have the surplus in the budget right now. How much is that, Dana? Half million? Yes. About um, 500,000. Kind of the same, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Um, but uh, uh, of course, I hate to spend that down too much because you're, I mean, I like to carry some for a rainy day fund. Um, but I think it's, uh, I mean, we can put it on the next agenda for an open discussion. Currently, right now, um, the budget is estimated to increase. The, and I mean the operating budget plus the special appropriations, which you're not going to be able to do anything, uh, about 9.16%. The operating What's budget that? alone is 7.75. So, so for me, you know, I think it's really good that we have a surplus. You know, we should always have money on hand in case things go really, really sideways. Um, you know, but it's gonna it's gonna get really hard uh, for people next year and 
uh, I'm dead serious about wanting to do it. And we did it in Norfield when times got tough and uh, Berlin's a different town, but I think we ought to, you know, really focus in and see what we can do. It's certainly worth a discussion on seeing, you know, where our opportunities lie and, you know, where we can streamline things and, um, you know, make sure we take employee feedback and we're going to need some time to do all those things. So the sooner we can start talking about it, the better in my view. Another thought that I had, and I don't know if it's something that we can do without putting before a vote, but anything that might be able to be done, John mentioned uh, folks having a hard time paying taxes. Would we want to incentivize tax payments either by um, an interest rate reduction if they were to come in early or on time? Is that something people would want to entertain? Well, you already have that with the uh, penalties. So that's already built in? Yeah, to the mo well, at town meeting there, when they voted on it, it the, uh, it's the payment dates plus the uh, penalties and interest. Okay. Okay, if there's no further discussion on that, Angelina, did you have anything for round table tonight? Not at this time. Am I missing anyone? I don't think I am. Okay, and do we have an executive session tonight, Dana? No, we don't. Okay, do I entertain a motion to adjourn? So moved. Seconded. Thank you. Wonderful. So we're concluding the meeting tonight at 8.01. Thank you all. Congratulations, Flo. That's a record. Nice job, Flo. Well. <laughs> Thank you all. Good job. Have a good Pleasure. night. Have, have a good Thank night. Thank you all. Have a great one. Good night.